Our first project will be to shrink wrap a boat. And we've chosen a 19 footer here. And all the same principles that work on this 19 footer will work on larger and smaller boats. What Ryan has done already is put in the center support, which runs from the highest point on the bow to the highest point on the stern. What this does is uh, give you the strength and slope that you need uh, to have snow and uh, ice, water, whatever, run off the cover. Okay, Ryan is now going to put a buckle in, going side to side on the boat over the top of the support pole. As you can see, uh, uh, we have two uprights in this particular boat. And generally speaking, you want to be about 10 inches higher behind the windshield on a boat with your upright support than where the strap normally falls right on the top of the windshield. This will give us the slope so that snow and ice uh, will run right off the cover. So we have a tight center support and now Ryan is also pulling the uh, side to side support nice and tight so that will give us plenty of support so there will be no weight resting on the windshield. He's going to do this one right behind the windshield and we'll do the one in the aft part of the cockpit also. Uh, buckles can absorb heat quicker than the shrink wrap, so we like to put some tape on them so that uh, the buckles won't protrude through when the uh, shrink wrap is hot. And on the top of the support pole, we're also going to put in another staple to hold the uh, pole upright. All right, Ryan's going back to put a buckle in the uh, strapping going uh, side to side over the last pole in the boat in the back of the cockpit. Uh, the, again, the buckles allow you to adjust the tension in the strapping and the tighter the upright support structure is, the better. Uh, we don't want any movement where snow or ice could sit on the cover. Even our thinnest shrink wrap will hold 256 pounds per square foot, which if it's laying inside of a uh, boat cover, it can cause some damage. So the support structure is very, very important. Uh, Ryan is, of course, putting a, uh, a loop on each side of the buckle just in case uh, it should turn. This gives it a little bit of extra durability. Then he'll trim off the edges, tape it, and this will, uh, and after he staples the top of the pole through the top of the uh, end cap, this will constitute the uh, finish of the support structure. And once that is done, uh, you just want to make sure you have all of your uh, tools taken with you off from the boat. And also uh, at that point in time, uh, make sure of course that your boat has been winterized. This is a very good time for we actually start putting the uh, shrink wrap on. All right, uh, we, again we have the support structure done. And what we have to do to measure how wide the material should be for your boat uh, is to, uh, you, you always want to be six to eight inches below the rubber rail on the boat. So what we're going to do to determine the width of the material is measure from the highest board at the center over the widest part of the boat down to six or eight inches below. We have about uh, 66 inches and we want to double that figure and our band is going to go right about here, our perimeter band, and we need another foot, six inches on each side that we're going to tuck under the band. So we're going to have uh, about a 12 foot piece of material here will work very well. Now the perimeter band goes around the hull horizontally and again this is going to be very tight and this is what's going to hold the cover on. To hold this band up though the first thing we're going to do is tie some loops in the uh, actual coming down from uh, stanchion bases or uh, grab rail in this particular instance using the same strapping. Now this uh, is just a very simple loop that we're going to run the perimeter band through and this will give us a nice straight line along the side of the boat also. And Ryan will now start uh, running this through and we're going around the entire boat from the stern around the bow and back to the stern again where we will put a buckle in and tighten it with a tensioning tool. Ryan's coming around now with the perimeter band. Again it's went around the entire boat and we want to put a buckle in at the stern where we get an equal pull down both sides of the boat. And the buckle is installed in the uh, strapping so that we can put a tensioning tool on it. And again, we, we want this band to be extremely tight. This is the band that's holding the entire cover on. If it's loose at all, it can chafe 
and uh, move up and down on the side of the boat, which isn't good during the winter storage season, uh, causing scratches in the gel coat or paint. Also, if this band is loose at all, if snow is sitting on top of the cover, it can pull the band up, allowing the snow to fall into the cover. And again, the shrink wrap is strong enough to uh, cause damage on uh, some boats if it uh, did happen to fall on the inside of the boat. So Ryan's putting the tensioning tool on right now and it uh, easily uh, slips onto the uh, strapping. And you can put the strapping through any of the uh, slots in the capstan and he's starting to pull it tight and we want to again make this just really, really tight. The strapping itself is a woven polyester cord and uh, it will stretch only about one or two percent just before it gets to its maximum break strength. So we're continuing to pull out. Then Ryan will go down and feel on the side of the boat to make sure it's tight enough before he cuts the strapping off. Ryan's now checking the tension in the side of the uh, perimeter van. Again, we want this extremely tight. He'll also uh, cover the fuel vent at this time. This is very important that the fuel vent be covered so no fumes are escaping. Uh, a, a simple piece of tape over the fuel vent will uh, make that happen. Now the fuel vent will probably be covered by the shrink wrap, so what Ryan is going to do is put a piece of tape below where the cover is going to go on the side of the boat so we can come back and remember where the fuel vent was, because we do want to open it up again before the, uh, uh, after we actually have the um, cover on the boat. All of our rolls of shrink wrap are center slit material, so that means they have an opening in them. They're multifold, so if you order a 40 foot wide roll of material, it's not going to be 40 foot wide as it comes to you. You'll have multiple folds in it, and all of the material actually has a slit down the center. So as you put it on the, the object you're going to cover, it doesn't matter if it's a machine, boat, whatever, it will unfold equally in each direction, so it's, uh, it, it's very easy to apply. And it has a bit of slip in it also, so it unfolds easily. Also, the uh, rolls of shrink wrap all come on a uh, three-inch cardboard core, so it's very easy to uh, run a pipe through like on our uh, film dispenser. And uh, the film should be always off the ground. It has a lot of static electricity in it, which means that it's going to pick up dirt, gravel, and so on, and you do not want to drag that up and over a uh, boat uh, or machinery, because then you're getting... Uh, uh, dirt on it which can cause abrasion and scratches. So we're ready now. We have our tight perimeter band, the support structure is done, the fuel vent is uh, covered and we're ready for Ryan to start putting the film on the boat. Ryan's in the boat now pulling the film over. We ought to keep this folded as long as possible before uh, uh, getting it the entire length of the boat before we unfold it side to side. Uh, then it turns into more of a wind catcher. And Mother Nature already knows when you open a box of shrink wrap and you can almost always hear the wind start to pick up. So we want to have it all folded up and again that's another good reason to have the uh, perimeter band tight. Because now when we have the film on and we unfold it at the first time uh, we want to be able to tuck it and have the perimeter band actually hold the material underneath it. Now as, we putting, or as we're putting the film on we want to have an extra six inches at the bow below the perimeter band and same thing at the stern. Ryan's cutting the film making sure he has enough to go over the lower unit. Next step is going to be down folded and again this is a center slit material that unfolds equally from the center to each side. And you can see how easily it does unfold and I was draping nicely uh -oh, I'll crossed it on the boat. Once Ryan has it unfolded he's going to tuck a little bit at the bow and at the stern and on along by the uh, near the windshield also just to make sure that it holds on. And we really don't need that much to uh, extra below the perimeter band 
to tuck under. You always want to make sure that the center of the material is on the center of the boat because it's disheartening when you cut off some when you're already short. You find a couple of pleats up near the bow. And then the next pleat will be near the windshield, and then we'll have one at the transom corners also. Just tucking enough right now to hold the material on. Again, this is where a tight perimeter band is uh, necessary to make sure that the film does stay on until we have a chance to heat weld it with the heat tool. Even as it's getting tucked under the perimeter band, you can see it's beginning to look like a boat cover already. And you can see the nice slope that we have with our support structure. Ryan's finishing tucking along the sides and working towards the bow. And once we get to the bow, we have a, a special way of cutting out the excess material so that uh, you get a much neater and uh, more durable type of bow. And now, and Ryan just went by the windshield, and you can see that there's a, always a pleat near the uh, side of the windshield on, on all boats. And we just like to put the pleat towards the stern just as a standard type of uh, operation in case the boat will be towed anywhere. And uh, on this particular boat, we don't really have much of a, uh, a pleat as we get towards the bow. On some boats, you'll find that uh, there is a pleat. Now at the bow, there is always excess material. A lot of people just fold it over and try and heat weld it all together. But as you can see, the easiest way is to cut out the excess. So Ryan just moved the film out a few inches forward of the bow, followed the shape of the bow down, and now he just can tuck it in either direction, overlap it and tuck it. Ryan has the uh, entire uh, cover tucked under the perimeter band around the boat. Now it's time to use the heat tool to make a heat weld. So we're actually putting a hem in the cover where uh, he'll run the heat tool in a horizontal fashion, the uh, flame itself, right above the perimeter band. And uh, he's using the back of his hand to uh, pat the material, and that fuses the pieces together so the perimeter band is actually sealed into the base of the cover. You only need a couple inches of uh, heat weld to actually make it work well. Now, as you come to a pleat, you want to do the pleats at the same time as you're going around the boat. So when you're done going around, you're ready to, to begin shrinking the cover. So same thing, you shoot heat into the pleats, pat it shut with the, the back of your hand, making sure that you're wearing your glove. Again, the heat will be horizontal, just above the perimeter band. This is a beautiful use of the shrink wrap, or the shrink fast heat tool. And it goes very quickly. This is why you only want a couple of three or four inches of material tucked in above the perimeter band. 